All right, hi everybody, and let's get right into this one. April 27th, 1949, Athletics of Red Sox. Red Sox are seven and one. Philadelphia is four and five. They're a better team than that, um, and we'll see how this one goes because I think the Boston's going to uh, rip them a new one today. Omar Vallo, and the, he's uh, the leadoff hitter here for uh, Philadelphia, and he has a three-one count on him now. Ellis Kinder starting with the Red Sox, and Kinder loses him. There's a uh, walk to Vallo, the leadoff hitter for Philadelphia. That brings up Eddie Juice, just like that. The um, Elmers and Eddies in this save are very, very good at taking pitches and at getting on base. 2-0 now the count on Eddie Juice, and uh, there's ball three, and Kinder needs to get it together, and he can't. That's ball four, and there's two walks here in the early going, just like that. Uh, and he's only thrown one strike so far, Ellis Kinder, that is, and Sam Chapman's up, and he can do some damage. And uh, there's an off-speed pitch for a strike from Ellis. Oh, one now, and there's a one caught, little, little ball chopped off the plate, over to uh, Johnny Pesky at uh, uh, third base. He throws uh, he throws Chapman out, and that brings up Ferris Fain with runners in second and third. And uh, we are going to keep the infield back. And uh, Ferris Fain only hitting 103, and uh, he pulls out a suicide squeeze out of his back pocket. We'll see if that suicide squeeze ends up working here against the powerful Red Sox or not. Um, Fain with a suicide squeeze. It goes well. The ball goes over to Kinder. He's not expecting it. He ends up having to go to first base for the out. That's the second out of the inning. And uh, Valo is able to score. Elmer Valo, by the way, when you think about this, he walked, went to second on another walk, went to third base on a ground out, and then was able to score on a suicide squeeze. No hits for the Athletics, and they lead one to nothing. And um, that's a real interesting way for this game to start. It also goes to show you just how poorly uh, Ferris Fane has been hitting so far in this season. If the uh, computer's looking at him saying, well, I'm going to bunt with my number four hitter here leading off. I probably should have done a better job with these lineups, honestly. Wally Moses now takes a ball from Ellis Kinder, and then he lines one to right field. O'Brien can't catch it, and it is 2 nothing athletics just like that. I say, though, we'll see if that will be enough. This is the same Red Sox team that yesterday scored 14 runs. So we'll see if that's going to be enough for today or not. Um, good hitting, good piece of hitting, though, by um, Wally Moses. And um, as you know from uh, watching these games before and from reading my blog, you know that this Philadelphia Athletics team has very, very good fielding. Here comes Hank Majeski now, and that one's upstairs for ball one. and no, no, the count. And uh, that one's off to deep left center, and it is, uh, I was going to say DiMaggio knows Ted Williams who makes the catch on that one, and we go to the bottom of the first inning. It's 2 nothing Philadelphia, and here comes Ted Williams. Now, I know that I have a lot of new viewers, and you might be wondering why in the world is Ted Williams hitting first as he's got 1-1 one, one count right now. That's because we look at his on-base percentage, and we say we want this guy to come up as many times as humanly possible. Ted Williams hits first for me, all right? If you don't like it, you can do your own replay. I do my lineups. Ted Williams hits first here. 2-1 now the count on Ted, and he takes that one high. Three and one now the count on him. He's going to take a walk here. Polo misses wide. Williams is on first base. And now you'll see the reason why we have the lineup like this because Vern Stevens is up next. And it goes from worse to even worse for Philadelphia. Vern Stevens has an incredible uh, year so far. Five home runs, hitting 389. And he takes a ball. Fowler misses with another one. There's ball two. And he lays off a change at ball three. And uh, that's low and outside, four straight balls. And just as was the case with Ellis Kinder, so it is with Dick Fowler. Two walks to start off the game. Bobby Doerr now coming up, uh, but we're not bunting. We're going to swing away with him. Fowler misses with another fastball. Bobby now, he reaches for that one, lifts a foul. 1-1 one, one the count on him. Only the second strike of the game so far from Fowler as another one goes inside. 2-1 and one the count. 2-1 and one the count now. That one's fouled off at the plate. And uh, Dora gets a, uh, foul, a fly ball up to uh, Valo in left field. We're not going to send Williams at all. We'll leave him here. Not with Dom DiMaggio coming up. Dom DiMaggio hitting 469, 564 on base percentage. And this Red Sox team will punish you if you don't throw strikes. 1-0 now the count on him. Hits that one over to deep left center, and that's going to score two, I think. We're going to send Stevens home. Um, that's at least a double, and DiMaggio winds up uh, getting to third base. Nine-game hitting streak there for uh, uh, Dom DiMaggio. And... Uh, my goodness. <laughs> My goodness, that's uh, that's one crazy, excellent piece of hitting. And this Red Sox team is sort of like the 1949 Yankees in that there's really no weak spot anymore in the lineup. I mean, I was talking just the other day about the Yankees and how we had Hank Bauer hitting seventh. You know, we have Dom DiMaggio here. Um, he probably should be hitting third, actually, I'm thinking. And we may make some changes. But uh, Dom DiMaggio has been hitting absolutely amazingly so far at the beginning of the season. And this Red Sox team has the ability to 
I mean, really, really make you pay if you don't throw strikes. DiMaggio on a third base now, one out for Johnny Pesky. Uh, average of 226, I guess, if we look at that. But again, on pace percentage of uh, 385, he's getting on base. One, two, now the pitch to uh, Pesky, and he grounds that one over to now the first base line. And what happens? Ferris Fain sort of lazily watches that play instead of making the play, and it ends up staying fair instead of going foul as he hoped. And DiMaggio has the go ahead run. And that's not what you want to see. And uh, I bet Connie Mack is not feeling very happy right now. Um, that is not what you want to see uh, from your first baseman. You don't want to see that kind of uh, lazy play and lackadaisical attitude. But I'll tell you what, in recent games, if you've been watching with us, we've had a number of lazy plays by players who should be playing better, and they've wound up winning the game. Matt Batts, now my favorite player. Matt Batts is up here. 1-0 count on Matt. Matt Batts, who should have played, I think, more frequently in the regular year, and he grounds into a double play, and that's a Philadelphia Athletic Classic 6-4-3. to On we go to the top of the second, 3-2 Red Sox. And here is Pete Soder leading it off, and he fouls one back. Oh, on the count. 0-2 now on Soder. And that's a check swing, and he just gets a piece of it to stay alive. And Pete goes deep, and he hits that one to the uh, deepest part of the ballpark, straight away center field. I guess it's not the deepest part, actually. I guess a little bit to the right would be deeper, but he hits that ball about 400 feet over everybody's head, and that is a home run, and we are tied um, uh, just like that here in the top of the second inning, 3-3. And uh, this is going to be one of those games, isn't it? You know that this is going to be one of those games. Uh, Mike Guerra now, who uh, was a uh, key pinch hitter for Philadelphia in that game against the Yankees, fouls one off 0-1, and, and now it's 1-1. 1-1 one, one, uh, one, one is the count now. 1-2 and two now on uh, Mike Guerra, the uh, Cuban. 1-2 and two still. And that's hit down the left field line, and that is out of here. And that's another home run, and Ellis Kinder who had an excellent game in his last start, forgot to bring his A stuff today. And, um, man, this game might take a little while. Settle down settle down, and fasten your seatbelts because this is going to be a pretty wild game. Guerra um, with, I believe, his first home run of the season. And that makes the score 4-3 to three Philadelphia. And you know that we are not even close to done here. And uh, this is the reason why you can see the wind is uh, blowing out to right field here at Fenway Park. It was nice and cool, but uh, with the wind blowing out and with uh, the park factors the way that they are in 1949, largely because of the sort of team that Boston had, uh, boy, I mean, you know that we're going to have one of those games. You know that it's going to be a game that sees a lot of runs. And up comes Dick Fowler, the pitcher, and Ellis Kinder promptly throws him a ball. And another ball, 2-0 and is the count on him. I mean, lines one to center field that falls in front of Dom DiMaggio, and I've really got to wonder, and here comes Elmer Valo, and I don't know how much longer we're going to stay with Ellis. 2-1 now the pitch on Valo, who walked last time up. There's a little liner to shallow right, and uh, that is down for a hit. Two runners on now. Nobody out yet here in the top of the second inning. Here's Eddie Juiced, and we get a strike on him, and now there's a ball one and one. Uh, ball two now, two one the count on Juice, and he takes one outside for the third ball, and there's a fastball in there. I'm going to say if Ellis walks him, he's out of here, and he does walk him, and uh, I don't think I can watch this much longer. And uh, those of you who have been following in the blog know what I think about taking out pitchers in this season, but uh, it's about time that we get somebody else in here. We're going to go with Wendy McCall. I know he doesn't look that good, but um, he's somebody different, and that's what we're going to do. Four to three now. We're not playing the infield in because uh, this might get out of control in a hurry. He misses with a breaking ball. One and zero the count now. Bat sets up away. One and one for the strike there. That one's fouled back by Sam Chapman. One and two, and uh, there's a little grounder to Dora there at uh, second base. Goes to short over to Hitchcock at first. Um, the uh, Athletics score the run, uh, but we are able to uh, get two men out out of that, and we have uh, two outs now with a runner on third base. And uh, up is Ferris Fane once again, and he cannot bunt here, or should not at least, because there are two men out. But, you know, as we've seen so far in this replay, you never know. You never know what this computer manager is going to do. His <laughs> computer manager has done some crazy things. They might try to bunt with him anyway. 1-0 now the pitch on Ferris. And it's 2-0 now as uh, Wendy can't quite find the strike zone. But then he gets that ground ball over to Dewar, and that does that. We're going to have a little bit of modern management here as uh, uh, Tommy O'Brien comes up, and it's uh, 2-0 counting him now, Fowler falling behind. 3-0 and now, and we're going to let him take this pitch. And he takes a fastball strike, we'll let him take the next one, and that's right down Broadway. Now we have to swing. 
Payoff pitch, and that's hit into the alley, and nobody gets that one, and O'Brien's in with a leadoff double. Very, very well done. Here comes Billy Hitchcock. I was going to say that we are going to play like a modern manager because once McCall's spot comes up, we are going to pinch hit for him. Hitchcock, and we're bunting. Hitting 0-59 of the season, not hitting anything, and uh, he misses the first one as a ball. And um, he does get the good bunt down, and it's Guerra who's got to make the play to Fain at first base, and O'Brien goes to third. And you thought I wasn't going to play small ball, but I do play a little bit of small ball here. When we need it, I'll play it. You can see Bernie, Bertie Tebbett showing up as tired there, who's played. I believe that means that he's played in 10 games. And uh, let's uh, take a look here. Now, he's only started seven games. Of course, we haven't played 10 games so far this season, but uh, the game's telling me that uh, we need to give him a little bit of rest. And so we will not use Tevis as a pinch hitter. Instead, we will use Lou Stringer as our pinch hitter. And uh, we'll see what we can do here. Runner on third base, one out, and O'Brien. That one's fouled off, and that one's uh, balled low, one and one. That goes wide, two and one. That goes wide, three and one. Fowler not fooling anybody here. And Stringer takes ball four, and you know that's a problem because you know who is coming up next. And this is why I tell you that this game might be much more uh, run productive than you think. Williams, though, hits a ta weak tapper back to the mound. We send O'Brien from home. He's thrown out of the plate. Um, not what we wanted Ted Williams to do. Um, swing of the first pitch, too, mind you. Um, so much for Ted and the science of hitting. Uh, Williams is probably going to be lambasted in the uh, Boston newspapers for that one. Uh, but uh, Williams uh, does manage to make first base because we sent the runner from third and were able to stay out of the double play that would have ended the inning. Stevens up now. And he fouls one off and uh, takes one for a ball. One and one now on Stevens, and he hits a foul ball that goes off to the left. One and two. And uh, Fowler misses low. Two and two on him. Fouled straight back again. A lot of foul balls in this game. And another one to Stevens. He takes the one high full count. Lots of full counts as well. And there's the ground ball to shortstop, and Eddie Juice takes care of it, and that does that, and that does it for our threat. And I thought we were going to get more out of that than we did, but it's all right. We'll put Fritz Dorish in there and see how long he can last. I know what you're thinking. Doris didn't have that many innings in real life, but we're going to go with him anyway because it's one of those games. And uh, the uh, it's uh, Wally Moses up there, a little ground ball to Johnny Pesky, throws him out of first, one away. Here's Hank Majeski, takes a strike. Doris uh, lets it go, lets it fly, strike two on Majeski, and uh, Majeski hits the next one over to right field where O'Brien can't make the play, and it's a double. O'Brien is not um, not a great outfielder. Um, and uh, the next batter here, Pete Suter, in the count is own two on him. And there's a big hanging curveball that just misses. One and two now the count. And Fritch gets the strikeout. And Sutter stood there looking at it like the house by the side of the road. Uh, many of you remember Appa Baseball for Windows. I sure do with uh, Ernie Harwell making that call. Guerra grounds one out to short. And that does that. On him we go to the bottom of the third. 5-3 athletics. Here's Bobby Doerr. And I've got to wonder what I'm thinking batting him third the way he's been hitting. We should have Dom DiMaggio batting third, but of course we can't change that in the middle of the game. 1-2, now the pitch on Dora takes that for a ball, 2-2. Two and two, And there's a good swing, but fouls it off, 2-2 two two still. And there's a grand ball to shortstop over to Juice. Juice has it, throws him out of first, and here comes Dom DiMaggio. And uh, Dom DiMaggio goes deep to left, tries to get that one to the wind. It does go into the wind, but um, Valo is there and makes the catch right underneath the monster, 2 out. Here's Johnny Pesky now, and uh, there is a strike to him, strike one. Pesky launches one back to deep right center field, not quite by that pesky pull, unfortunately, and it's uh, the third out. And here come the athletics here, top of the fourth inning, leading 5-3. to 0-2 oh, now is the uh, count on Dick Fowler, and uh, Fritz misses low, 1-2. and two. There's a little foul ball over to the uh, right side, and there's a ball, 2-2 two and two now. And uh, that one is hit over to Williams in left, who watches it drop for a single right in front of him. And that's a problem because that's the pitcher on yet again. And uh, there's a bunt. What was that? A bunt by uh, – that was a bunt by Valo, who bunts the pitcher, tries to bunt the pitcher to second base. That is a bizarre play. That's an absolutely strange play. And uh, Valo replaces him at, f at first base as the runner. But what in the world are you doing? The, the leadoff hitter ends up trying to bunt the pitcher – forward and then what happens here is with an 0-1 count um Doris fires the uh, pitch in to uh, Eddie Juiced and Juice gets under it and hits it to uh, left field up and out over the green monster two run home run 7 to 3 athletics and this game is getting out of hand but not the way that I thought it would and 
the proud Boston Red Sox, who were uh, surprising, well, surprising really nobody by playing very well this season, have a problem, and that problem is called pitching. Sam Chapman now takes the ball, 1-0 now the pitch on him, and it's 1-1 one one after that strike, and uh, Chapman gets a single to a straightaway center field. And we may have Dorsch coming up, so I'm going to stick with him a little bit more than I normally would. Curveball misses here to Fane 1-0 now, and Fane lines one down to the right field line for a double, and that puts runners on second and third, and we're just going to leave the infield back as Wally Moses takes a ball, and that's on the corner for a strike. 1-1 one, one now the count on Wally. 2-1 and one now the count on him, and there's a little pop-up, and Matt Batch just can't get to it, Matt. Come on, you got to get to that one. Two and two now. That one's foul to the left side. Two and two. Still another foul ball. Lots of foul balls, as I said, in this game. And that's a uh, single that goes right through Hitchcock there at first base. Hitchcock, not a good hitter, not a good fielder. Why is this guy in this team? And Moses winds up to second base after O'Brien makes the air in the outfield. And we've got to make some defensive changes here. This is getting ridiculous. And um, I am going to put Walt Droppo in. I know that he can't hit either. But uh, Hitchcock has not been improving me with anything out there. And uh, let's see what we can do for uh, O'Brien. Let's see who else we've got here. we got a bunch of guys who have a bunch of zeros there in real life. I mean, you have zeros of hitters right here, right? Sam Maley, you want to put this guy in? At least he can play the, the uh, outfield. How about this guy here, uh, Stan Spence? Looks like he can play a little bit better. So we'll put Spence in instead. And um, we are going to also take Dorish out, um, who has not been playing very well. Not been pitching the way that we want him to. And instead, we will put in Denny Galehouse. Denny Galehouse will be your new pitcher here. Um, runner on second base, 9-3 to three Philadelphia. And here comes Galehouse with Wally Moses on second base, one out. And he promptly throws a ball. Looks like he popped up Hank Majeski, but that one's out of play. Majeski then lines the next pitch over to left field for a base hit. And it is the Athletics who are taking uh, taking advantage of this weather. And uh, there's a strike by Gale House, another strike. Oh, two now the uh, count to Pete Suter, who had that big home run. And uh, two and two now. And that one's fouled, and it's still two and two. Another foul ball. As I've said before, too many of those here in Diamond Mine Baseball. And uh, unfortunately, Matt Bats wanted that one up, but couldn't quite get at it right. Another foul ball. We have a full count, and that one's below the knees, and Denny Galehouse has walked him, and I've really got to start wondering about my um, choice of career here as manager of this team. And this is not what we wanted to see from the Red Sox. There's a little infield fly, and uh, Droppo catches that one for the second out, and I just noticed that Droppo has a poor as well for fielding. And uh, the uh, next pitch by Galehouse is in there, and uh, we get uh, Dick Fowler, um, who's up again to ground out to short or to uh, second base over to short, and that does it. Boy, the Philadelphia Athletics bat around in that inning. Four runs, nine to three Athletics, and uh, here we go straight away to the bottom of the fourth inning. Matt bats, and he pops the first one up uh, away and foul. Hits the next one over to short to second base to Sutter. Not very hard hit, and there's one away. Here comes Stan Spence now, and he takes two straight balls and a strike. Two and one now is the count on Spence, and he grounds that one over to Eddie Juiced. Two outs, and here's Walt Droppo. Oh, two now the pitch on Walt really quickly, and he looks to strike three, and that's that. And here we are at the top of the fifth inning, Elmer Vallo, and Galehouse misses with that first pitch, and there's a ground ball to first base. And uh, goes over to Droppo, who uh, throws over to Galehouse, covering 3-1 on the putout. And here comes Eddie Juiced, one away here, top of the fifth inning. And uh, the count now 2-0 on Juiced, and there's ball 3, 3-0 the count now. And uh, there's that uh, automatic strike by Galehouse, but unfortunately he wasn't able to throw the second one. And Juiced is now on first base after that walk. Sam Chapman now up, and 0-1 is the count on him, 1-1 now as he takes the sinker low. And there's another pitch outside. And Sam Chapman goes straight to left field for a home run, and it is 11 to 3 Philadelphia. And this is not what we expected to have happen. And we'll just leave Galehouse in here for a little bit longer because he's leading off the next inning. And um, I'm going I don't want to have to waste another pitcher. We have four more innings to pitch through. And up was Ferris Fain, who walks on basically four straight pitches, and this is getting ridiculous. Oh, one now the count on Wally Moses, and uh, that ball is lined down the right field line foul. Oh, and two now. And uh, he straightens it up that way, and uh, Spence did not play that ball well and winds up going to second base with a double as Spence had to run all the way over to the foul line. He was playing, I guess, um, inside on Moses, and up comes Hank Majeski again, two for three so far today. Fouls that one back. Oh, one the count on him. Uh, and that one is inside one on one. 
off the plate two one now the count on Hank and he fouls one back two and two now the count and that one's high three and two full count once again skies that one up no play on it and there's the ball straight to right right and uh, Spence shows us that he can catch the ball two away now and that of course scores the runner 12 to three athletics now I knew it was going to be one of those offensive days but I thought that Boston would get at least something out of it three on another pitch on Pete Suter and Gale House able to throw that strike but he'll walk him here and it's high and he walks him what did I tell you Danny Gale House pitching almost 50 pitches here more than uh, we saw from Ellis Kinder the starter and that is bad, bad, bad. Johnny Pesky, normally who has at least somewhat smooth hands, lets that one go past him for an air. And it's 13 to 3 athletics. And here comes Dick Fowler yet again. And uh, that is another is that another air on Pesky? That one goes past him. And uh, the throw comes in uh, to try to catch the next runner from Ted Williams. And unfortunately, we're not able to catch him. That ends up being a hit there. Not another error on Pesky. The uh, official score, very, very nice to him. It's 14-3 to athletics now. And here's um, Elmer Vallo. And uh, that is hit deep to DiMaggio in center field. And Vallo ends up being the final out. And I love... Of course, the way the Diamond Line Baseball is play-by-play -play says this, at long last, the final out. You talk about long last, five runs in the top of the fifth inning for the Athletics after scoring four in the top of the fourth inning. It's 14-3, to Philadelphia, and this game has felt long for those of us who manage the Red Sox. We're putting Combs in, Merle Combs in to pinch hit, and he's going to take over for Johnny Pesky at third base because I'm not very happy about the way that this has happened. My goodness. Combs rocks one to the uh, gap in right field, and he has a ground rule double as that one bounces into the uh, crowd, whoever is left in the crowd, that is. Williams clubs one along the left field line, but not quite deep enough. Combs tags and is going to third. Ridiculous play on my part, and he's thrown out. Um, and uh, here comes uh, Vern uh, Stevens, and uh, he grounds one out to uh, third base, and that does that. So now Combs is going to go in here into third base, which means that we're going to take Johnny Pesky out. And who do we have left on this? Well, we have another right fielder, and we have another catcher. We're going to keep Bats in the game. We're going to probably keep Spence in the game as well. So instead, we'll put the pitcher in that Pesky spot, but that means that the pitcher is going to come up right away. And uh, this is going to be one of those games where basically everybody bats, everybody does everything. Mm, Mickey Harris. Mickey Harris is going to be the relief pitcher here for Boston. And uh, we have a long way to go. It is only at the top of the sixth inning, 14-3 to three Philadelphia. Happy that you're with us today. I wish I had a better game to show you. 1-1 one, one now the count on Eddie Juiced, and that's 2-1 and one now. And that's inside 2-2, two and two, or 3-1, and one, my apologies. And now we have a full count, another one of these full counts here in Diamond Line Baseball, and Harris loses him, and Eddie Juiced is the runner at first base right at the beginning. And Sam Chapman comes up and promptly hits his second home run of the ballgame, another one over that monster, and boy, it's 16-3 to Philadelphia. I'm still scratching my head as to why in the world Ted Williams can't hit one over that monster here. You know, this is your home park. Fain, meanwhile, gets a base hit to right field. And uh, Philadelphia is threatening once again, 16-3 to with the lead. Nobody out. 1-1 one, one the pitch now on uh, Wally Moses. 1-2 and two now. Fouls one back, still 1-2. And Moses gets a base hit to center field. That is hit number 18 for the Athletics. And here comes Hank Majeski. And uh, that is high. 1-0 now the count to Hank. And uh, that is... <laughs> That is a, a pitch that bats blocks. It almost gets away from him. But as you know, as you know from reading the blog post, Matt Bats has a cannon for an arm and is able to throw the runner out of third base. That's the first out of the inning. Unfortunately, uh, Mickey Harris can't. Uh, well, he does throw a strike finally. 3-1 now the uh, count. And uh, Majeski chases a high fastball full count now on him. And Majeski winds up hitting a double, a uh, second double of the game for him as that goes between Williams and DiMaggio. And it is 17 to 3 Philadelphia. And that ball is hit to DiMaggio in center field by Pete Sutter for the second out. And here comes Mike Guerrera. And uh, this is one of the long videos, isn't it? 1 1. Now the pitch comes into Guerrera. That's a low and away. 2 and 1 now. And 2 and 2 is the count. And that fastball is outside. And Mickey Harris can't find the plate. And that's hit over to uh, Dora at second base. And finally, it's the end of that inning. Three runs for the Athletics, 17 to 3. And, boy, if you're a Boston fan, you probably have turned this off by now because this is painful. Bobby Dewar with a, a little ground ball over to Pete Suter, one out. And here comes Dom DiMaggio. Oh, one out the count on him. One and one now. And that's a strike by Fowler, one and two. 
And uh, DiMaggio finally gets a hit. Only the fifth hit of the ball game for the Red Sox, whose bats have been quiet since that first inning. Here comes Mickey Harris now. Mickey Harris takes the ball. 1-1 one, one the count on him. And 2-1 uh, and one now is the count on Mickey. And uh, he goes around on that one for a strike. 2-2. Two and two. And here is an oddity for you. So this is a, a double play ground ball to a Majeski at third base. Goes to second. And it's a bad throw, and Sitter has to go off of the bag to block it and to keep it from uh, being too wild. But now we have runners in first and second here, and here comes Matt Bats. And boy, I don't know, are we going to come back or what? 2-0 now the count on Bats. And he lays off that fastball 3-0 now, and Mats takes, uh, Mats, Bats takes that one high for a ball. And here comes Stan Spence. I don't know if we have the personnel to come back or not. We'll see. Spence takes a ball, 1-0. Change up from Fowler misses, 2-0 now. 2-0 the pitch, and he gets a strike in there, 2-1 and one now. And Spence hits a double play ground ball to the right side, but is able to beat it out, and that scores one run, 17-4 to four now. And here comes Droppo, Walt Droppo, who uh, is definitely not having the best year of his life. Um, Walt Droppo, how old is he here? He is uh, 26 years old, so his better years are um, ahead of him, I would say. Little ground ball over to Sutter. That's the third out. And um, here come the Athletics once again. Mickey Harris staying in there. And uh, the first pitch to Fowler is hit foul. And it's 0-2 very quickly. 0-2 now still on Fowler. And there's the uh, sl little ground ball hit slowly to Stevens. A short who throws it away. And uh, Fowler's on at first base. I tell you, after all the defensive substitutions that I made, I could understand it. I could understand it if one of the new players were making the errors. But um, S Stevens is a regular and shouldn't be making an error on that one. 1-1 one, one now, the count of Valor. Fouls one back, 1-2. One and two. And that's lined to the right side, and that gets past Dorr. And uh, the Athletics, once again, are threatening. Two runners on, nobody out. 1-0 oh, the count now, and Eddie Juice 2-0 oh, now. Runners on first and second. That... Uh, uh, ball hit, finds the sands two and two now and there's a little infield fly and uh, Droppo catches it for the first out one out now runners on first and second still from Matt, Sam Chapman two home runs in this game already Sam Chapman pops that one up and uh, that's another infield fly and Coombs has it for the second out Harris finally able to set in there and guess what happens Ferris Fain who hadn't been hitting at all gets a little infield hit and uh, now the bases are loaded, and here comes Wally Moses. And Wally Moses already with four hits in this game. We're only in the top of the seventh. And 0-2 oh, and now is the count on Moses, and he, he fouls one outside of first base. That's high. 1-2 and two now the count on Wally. That's inside. 2-2. Two and two. And he's jammed and popped up, and Combs has it. And uh, it's 17-4 to four, Philadelphia. 21 hits in this game so far for Philadelphia. And... Uh, here comes Merle Combs, and he lays off one um, inside, and it's 2-0 now the pitch on him. 2-1 and one now. 3-1 and one now the count on Combs, and there's a strike full count once again. Told you we have a lot of full counts in this game. Payoff pitch, mi mi payoff pitch misses, apologies, and here comes Ted Williams now, runner on first base, nobody out, bottom of the seventh inning. 17-4, to four, and he uh, takes a strike really quick. Line drive to third base, and that gets by Majeski, and uh, we're actually going to play it safe here with Combs. And you might wonder why we play it safe with Combs. It has nothing to do really with the situation. It has everything to do with the fact that Vern Stevens is coming up next. Why try to get that extra base when Stevens can send you there? And uh, oh, too quickly is a count on Stevens, and he just barely misses an extra base hit. Oh, and two still. One and two now. Two and two, the count on Vern. Two and two still. And that's bounced to Juice to short, and he boots it and uh, throw to Suter. It takes him off the bag. Everybody is safe. Base is loaded. We're still down by 13, but base is loaded now for Bobby Doerr, and we have something going on here. Nobody out. And what does Bobby Doerr do? He promptly grounds it to Eddie Deuce to short on the first pitch. Scores a run, 17-5 to five now, um, but uh, no base hit. Dom DiMaggio up there now, and he takes one for a ball. I'm surprised they don't walk him here. 1-1. One one. I guess it doesn't matter, though, because uh, this game is practically over anyway. Um, we are not going to send Williams home, actually, as I thought about that for a little while. A little ground ball to Sutter at uh, short, and um, that is the second out of the inning. Instead, we're going to have Sam Maley come in here, and he's going to pinch hit for Harris. And that's probably going to be our final pinch hitter here of this game, unless something really wild starts happening. We actually have a chance to get back into it. Um, we need somebody who can throw long relief, and I think that Frank Quinn is probably the man. And uh, we're going to put Quinn in here and see if we can't ride Quinn through the last two innings. 
Hank Majeski now starting this off here, top of the eighth inning, takes a strike. And there's a uh, bad, a uh, pitch lined off to the right side and through. Drop a very, very poor fielder there, which is part of the reason why. Hit number 22 for the Athletics as Pete Sutter comes up, runner on first base. And we get that double play. Goes to, it's grounded to door, goes to Stevens over to Droppo. Two outs just like that. And here's Mike Guerra playing a little bit better here now in the later innings. Um, and there's a 1-1 pitch to Guerra, and that's popped up to Bats, and he catches it for the out. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning now. Matt Bats, who's one of my favorite players, um, uh, comes up here and takes a strike quickly. And uh, it takes a big breaking ball that goes into the dirt. 1-1 one, one now the pitch. 2-1 and one now the pitch on Bats. And there's a hard ground ball to um, uh, third base, and Majeski is able to get to it, and it still is a base hit. Um, and we're going to credit Majeski here with um, a good play. Um, it doesn't have a play because he ends up falling on his back, but um, the um, unwritten part that goes on here that the play-by-play -play does not tell you is that Majeski prevents Matt Batch from getting an extra base hit, and that might be big. You never know. I mean, it's only a 12-run game. We could come back. 2-0 now the pitch on Spence, and he has a fly ball to right center, and that goes over to Moses, one away. We're not coming back, though, if we have Walt Droppo here hitting this ball to Chapman. There's two away, and here comes Merle Combs. I don't think we're coming back quite with uh, this bottom of the order, but you never know. It could happen. 2-0 now the pitch on Combs. He has ball three outside. 3-0 now the pitch on him. And that is wide, and that's the second walk of the game that Combs has taken on, and that causes a change in pitchers. And up comes Carl Scheib. Carl Scheib, um, by the way, um, back in the early 40s, was for a while the youngest player in baseball, came up at the age of 16. Carl Scheib, who had that big save the other day, and uh, not really a safe situation here. Um, Williams up now, one for three in this ball game, takes a ball. And another ball, two, and oh, now the pitch on Ted. And he pulls that one inside first base, and... Um, Gets a triple out of it, and uh, that's a great bit of hitting by Williams. Two runs score, 17-7 to seven athletics, and up comes Vern Stevens. And as I told you, just like that, we can at least get something going. The top of this order can make a lot of noise. And uh, Stevens hits one promptly to Juiced at uh, shortstop, who throws him out. And on we go to the top of the ninth inning. Well, this isn't quite as exciting as uh, the last couple of games have been, but we um, show you the good ones and the bad ones. Nellie Fox grounds that one over to Stevens, one away. Here comes Don White now to bat for um, Valo, and uh, the Athletics are starting to use their bench. 0-2 oh, now the pitch as Quinn comes in again. That's off the play 1-2, and two, and that's inside 2-2 two and two now is the count. And uh, White chases that one, and he's gone 2 away. And here comes Todd Davis to bat for Eddie Juice. 0-1 oh, now the count, the pitch on him. That's close, 1-1 one one now. Shot to drop oh, makes the un unassisted play at first base. And here comes Bobby Doerr, and this is the last dance, the last chance. And he fouls that ball promptly off to first base where Fane is there to catch it. One away. Dom DiMaggio now. And uh, there's a ball. 1-0 the count on him. 2-0 and now. And uh, that's inside for a strike. 2-1 and one now on DiMaggio. And he promptly grounds a base hit up the middle. Quinn is up there. We're not going to hit him. We're instead going to put this... Uh, Babe Martin in this game. Who is Babe Martin? I'm not entirely sure. 29-year-old catcher who has already appeared in one game, apparently barely appeared at all in real life. He fouls that pitch away, and uh, Davis unable to get to it. And that one is fouled off of Guerra Shingar's 0-2 now on uh, the young, uh, young Babe Martin. And he ends up lining one to right center field, and um, he's all the way over at second base. We'll send Dom DiMaggio home. And they do throw home, and DiMaggio is able to get his hand in there. And boy, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive, you know. Uh, uh, base hit for this kid who uh, never had a, a hit in real life. In fact, only two at bats there in real life in this game. That brings up Matt Bats, seventeen to eight. Red Sox still rallying, and uh, Bats hits one promptly over to Davis to short. Davis not exactly a smooth fielder because the computer took all the good fielders out for the Athletics. He ends up reaching on first base in the air, and we do have something happening, except, of course, we have Stan Spence coming up. Runners are first and third, one out, and uh, that's an 0-1 pitch now on uh, Spence, and we send bats, and there is a good gut double, a good uh, hit-and-run ground ball, and uh, the question is, do we send Martin or not? We're not going to send him. He's an awful runner. No chance to score on that ball, unfortunately, and here's Walt Droppo, runners in second and third now, and... Um, that ball is through the backstop, and uh, 
There's nothing that Guerra could do with it, even though he is an excellent catcher and very good at blocking pitches, and uh, that makes the score 17-9. to and You can see we've only had 10 hits so far in this game. We've been scoring quite a few runs without hitting the ball. Walt Droppo, I don't know if uh, he could hit the ball in this game if his life depended on it. Um, and that's another ball low, and uh, we're going to have him take this pitch. And that's a strike in there, in there on the inner half. And... Um, Lines one over to Davis at third base, who grabs it and snags it out of the air for the out. Take a quick look here at the final box score for you if you want to see it. And, uh, boy, that was a pretty ugly game overall by the Red Sox. And uh, you can see the ugliness there in that pitcher lineup. That is not what we want to see. Um, and so it is. I really hope that you enjoyed this anyway. Um, and uh, if you're just skipping here to the end, go back and take a look here. I mean, it was a wild game, but it's a little bit of fun for you. I got you out of here, too, in under 40 minutes anyway. Not too bad for a game with, uh, what, 26 runs, 32 hits, 7 errors. A lot of stuff going on in this one. How many walks did we have? Total, we had 14 walks. How about that? Um, anyway, sure hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, come back for more. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.